All right, so what it really comes down to is man's law versus God's law. The title of the sermon, of the message this morning is, it's the law. It's, uh, like we're under, we, right? we, we have to have some structure in our lives. There's, there's rules to follow. So what rules do we follow and how do we follow them? I think that's what the question really is. And, and we know, right, we've read, and I'm going to touch on a couple of them, uh, the Ten Commandments, basic rules to follow. How many people, when we, when we read them this morning for our, our, our call to worship, really read that? I mean, usually you see the first sentence in a few of them. You don't read the whole thing. But how many, how many people here was that the first for them to hear that read out the whole? Nobody? That's, you're all, you've all heard that before? Hmm. But those are the laws of God given to Moses. And again, you know, a lot of times when it comes to law, right, to rules, um, a lot of them are common sense. You know, the murder part and that kind of stuff, it's kind of common sense, right? But again, we all have laws. So we're going to look at it. It's the law this morning. But before we do, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you created us in a way to seek you. Because on our own, we can do a lot of damage. And people have done a lot of, lot of damage to us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father, above everything else to seek you. Help us to seek you. The knowledge of your will for our lives, help us, Lord, to not only hear and understand, but help us, Lord, to recognize the truth and give us the courage it's going to take to apply it to our lives. Father, this morning, again, I thank you for your presence here with us, Lord, and I just pray that you use me. <coughs> Speak through me, Father, the words that you would have me to speak. But most of all, Lord, I pray that you speak to me the words that I need to know. Give me, Lord, the courage that I need to, to be obedient. And I pray that, Lord, for each person here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're looking at man's law versus God's law. Yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> Is it not true that we must all live by written law? Yeah, I mean, right? God's is right here. We got man's law. I mean, you don't have to live by it, but you then have consequences when you don't, right? And that's just the way it is. If you only know, now listen, this is the truth part of it. If you only know the written law, you'll continue to break it. If that's all you're trying your best to live by, I mean, our history is proven we can't. Right? can't follow something on our own we cannot do, right? It's a good thing that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but on our own, we can't seem to pull that together. If we could, all those self-help books would really be good because then all we got to do is read them and then we would change. Right? Big book and a basic text included. All we'd have to do is read them and we're done. But there's more to it than just reading and understanding something. There's more to it than just a written law, or written rules. Something inside needs to change so that we're able to follow those rules. We're able to, to hmm, stop breaking the law? I don't know. I don't know. So we're talking about what the last couple of 
weeks. That word that I can never pronounce. But we're also looking at like chronic relapse and, and in and out, right? So recidivism. I got it. Recidivism. You got it. Right? So we don't want to be in and out. I mean, it's really the same thing. We re we're in and out of program. We're in and out of jail. What do we need to do? And I'm not saying, man, just to become some, you know, Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's not what it's about. <clears throat> it's not about that. You know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, it is a little bit about turning the other cheek. A little bit. But it's not about getting stepped on. So we're looking at God's law and man's law. If we only know the written law, we'll continue to break it. But when we know God's law in your heart, when you know God's law in your heart, you will what? You will rise above it. You will rise above it. Romans 2.14 again. Even Gentiles, right? Even non-believers. Even those that do not know God's written law. It says, even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without ever having heard it. There's something inside of us that tells us before we act out. All right, so here's a whole lot right here. Again, since the time of Moses, God has been giving us rules to follow, basic rules that were easy to understand, right? And we read them in our call to worship, which were the Ten Commandments. I pulled out a couple here, right? The universal, naturally ones, you know, like, that you're not supposed to steal, you're not supposed to kill or murder somebody, you're not, you know. But, but I mean, even common sense over the years have not been, has, has become less common, let's say. So in three, right, where it says, you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God, which is, don't take the Lord God's name in vain. You know what that means? See? <clears throat> OMG, when we use God's name, when we say things like, oh my God, in a conversation, when we are not addressing God, when we're just using it as just another word. I think it wasn't until the 90s that you actually even heard that on TV, on a show. It was considered, you don't do that. You don't take the Lord's name in vain. <coughs> now they walk around spitting it out like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? Ten Commandments, number three. Don't take the Lord God's name in vain. Every one of us is guilty. To some extent. Some more than others. <laughs> Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Okay, so that's one day a week. You know, there's... I, I don't think it's supposed to be a Sunday. Some people think it's a Saturday. Some people... How about we just look at least, at least one day a week where we put aside to focus on God. Anybody breaking that rule? Every single one of us? <laughs> see, look, see, on the end, I kind of put like, like examples. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. Man, how, how do you even have a politician today? If they were following this rule, <laughs> everybody points fingers at somebody else. We try to take the focus off ourselves by blaming somebody else. <clears throat> to some extent, I'd say we're all guilty. And ten. And this is one of the most, I get maybe misunderstood, right? This word here, covet. Okay? To really want, to lust after, to obsess over, 
right? What happens when we when we obsess over something, right? Long enough, we're going to end up doing it. What about when we lust after something too much? We end up going after it, don't we? Mm -hmm. So in this, I, I my my, ex, my my example is keeping up with the Joneses, but and, and the reason is because it, it actually says. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. So think about that. I mean, that's a big thing now. You know, the neighbor, the neighbor paints her house. I want to paint my house. The neighbor gets a new car. I want to get a new car. But how far do we take that? How far do we take that? Guy in, the, in your dorm got something that you want in his locker. You think about that enough, what's going to happen? <sighs> so, since we know God's written law, we show that we don't know Him because we don't instinctively obey it. Even though we've heard it. So something has to change inside. So it's not about things in black and white, things that are on paper for us to follow. I mean, even the, the 12 steps, okay, they're there, they're written, it tells you what you're supposed to do. You know, usually you work with your, your, your sponsor and you go over each step and anybody still fill out the worksheets? Right? You can fill out the worksheets all you want. How about the phase work? Every Wednesday night when we're, when we're looking at phase changes, I mean, I, I, you have to be completely open and honest with yourself as you're filling that stuff out. It's not just because you want your counselor to read it and think that you got it all together. It's because you have to be open and honest with yourself. We have to, it, it, it goes far beyond just things in black and white. So, has to come from in here, right? That's why even though we have the written law, we continue to break it. Because we don't know God's law in our hearts. There is purpose in both, but one can't be followed without knowing God's law in our heart. That is natural law. This can only be known through a maintained relationship with Him. So if we need to follow written law, we must have God's natural law in our hearts. All right, so first we're going to look at man's law. Since the days of Moses, man has compiled many laws to make people stay in line. Is that not true? You know, I, I, I truly believe that if you look at the life of Christ when he came back, how he acted and interacted, how, he's, how he dealt with the religious leaders at the time, you know, like, what are you doing, man? You just don't, you, you, you expect everybody else to follow your laws, but you can't follow them yourself. Man compiles so much and so much on top of things that are simple, it becomes impossible to follow. It's not God's law, it's man's law. So let's look at that. <laughs> and here we go, a wonderful portion of scripture taken from... Romans 13, 1 through 7. And again, is this turning the cheek? I don't know. Maybe a little bit. But you got to get to the point. You got to understand. And I'm not even going to get into the audience at the time. But you got to. Let, let me read this. And I'll try to read it through without stopping. I might chuckle a bit, but. Everyone must submit, submit to governing authorities. For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Um, pause for effect. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And they, are, they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to... <laughs> Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants, sent for good, sent for your good. 
But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes too, for these same reasons, for the government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them. And give respect and honor to those who are in authority. <coughs> There's a lot to swallow right there. I, this is hard to swallow in today's world. Okay. I would imagine it was hard to swallow then as well. Who are the government authorities that they're referring to in this portion of Scripture? Well, this is the book of Romans. Do you think they were all in line with God's will? Again, is this part of the other cheek? Listen. It comes down to this. And when I say pray for the authorities, I mean whether you agree with them or not. But we need to be praying for ourselves, again, to rise above. Um, do we get caught up? Into, I get caught up. Facebook is a real temptation for me to get caught up in pointing at authorities, let's say. And it's real. It's real. So you see what I wrote. What on earth is this? Submit the governing authorities. Give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are there people in authority that you can respect? Yeah, I'd say there probably is. But it seems like it's getting further and further between those that you can. Again, man, all this... All this comes back to self. It comes back to self. It comes back to faith. It comes back to our relationship with God. I, are there some truths in here? Yeah. If you do wrong, you should expect to have problems, right? Right? So that. If we do right, we should then expect everything to go right. No. It doesn't work that way either. But how we react to things. How we live our lives. Okay? I, I talk a lot about changing who we are, so that's the ultimate way of making amends, right? Mm -hmm. To those we love. It all comes back to changing ourselves. If we want our government to change, let's work on changing yourself. If you want those around you to change, work on changing yourself. There is truth in this, where it says, if you want, if you want to live without fear, get with God's law. Because we're never going to be able to follow man's law. We're never going to be able to become the men that he created us to be, unless we do. So I, I put in a little, I, I just want to go over this real quick. I'm going to go over this in July. Um, but as far as we are as a, as a country, the Declaration of Independence is, pa is based on, because when I'm talking about God's law, I, I, I'm a big believer in natural law. All right, these are inalienable rights from God. Based on natural law, which is God's law. While the Constitution is a constitutional law, a man-made law, you understand, to understand the difference, con conventional law are created by man and therefore can be destroyed. Natural law derives itself from our creator, a force beyond man's control, therefore it is unalterable. And here you can read for yourself, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, true. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Right? 
that are among them, not all of them, but among them, are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Does anybody know that before they changed it, happiness meant said property? And the wise founders, <laughs> the ones that were writing, changed that because they didn't want, because at the time people were property. And it was changed. I thank God for that. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent, us, of the governed. But when the powers to be in power continue to grow because they love power and they put themselves before God, our Declaration of Independence no longer exists. That's why we read that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to, do, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So again, back to happiness. So as we read Romans 13, 1 through 8, just remember this part here. Again, it comes down to God's law, natural law. How do we fix this mess and get back on track? What did I say earlier? Change yourself. So we're looking at God's law. It all comes down to knowing and keeping the most important of God's law. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus replied, You must love your God, the Lord your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law is all, and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Everything that we just looked at, that whole list in 8, 1 through, or 13, 1 through 8, wouldn't be an issue if everybody followed this. Now, we can't force anyone to follow this. We can pray for them to follow this. We ourselves are required to follow this. To love our Lord God above everything else and to love our neighbors as ourselves. It's personal. And in this country, our Declaration of Independence, your personal Declaration of Independence, right, requires. The Declaration of Independence means nothing unless you live a personal independent Declaration of Love. You get me now? Where we're coming from here, I'm talking about each one of us as an individual making a decision that we are going to live by God's law. And the most important of all, you can go through the Ten Commandments, you can go through, I mean, if you really want to read some, go through like Leviticus and stuff about all these rules. <coughs> I'm not going to talk about some of them, but let's say I don't have curly cues, right? There, there's a lot of things that were considered laws. But because of Christ, this is what we need. And everything else then falls into place. Romans 8. Romans 13, 8 through 10. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. That is one sentence. What do I owe you? I owe you my love. That's it. I owe that to every living person. So do you. 
Let's, let's just look at that. <coughs> All right, I'll read on. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal. I don't even want to snow that. I'm going to go back to you must not commit adultery. All right, I'll keep going. You must not steal. You must not covet. These and the other commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of God's law. I feel powerless over my government. I shriek. I, my stomach sickens when I see some of the things that go on. The way some people are treated differently than others. It makes me sick. But what can I do about it? I can make sure that I am who God created me to be. And rise above it. And that's what we all have. We all have the ability to submit ourselves to God, right? Accept and, and make a commitment that from this day, I am going to do my best to follow God's law. What's it tell me? Put him first and love everything. Pretty simple. I can do my part. That's my part. If me by doing my part is shared to someone else, they do their part. And it continues to grow. But it all comes back to personal. Personal. Plenty of written laws. Both God's and man's. And I have proven to myself that I am incapable of following that unless I have God's law in my heart. Chronic relapses, recidivism, in and out, in and out. It all comes down to a problem with following both really written laws and natural laws. Again, it requires a declaration to self. <coughs> By accepting Christ as your Savior, you're making a decision. A declaration to seek, know, and live by God's law. This is the law that sets you free. Take a look at laws and, and, and you know just so you know that every day each one of us breaks some law <laughs> there's so many that it's impossible not to break a law that have been compiled over the years but here I have two that are equal that's what I follow all the other ones then will fall in line but that's my main concern and I pray that that is your concern as well today <clears throat> that by accepting Christ into your heart, you made a decision right? to turn your will and your life over to God, to seek from Him nothing but the knowledge of His will for your life and the power to carry it out. But you will find that that will is that you love each other, that you put God first and love each other. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank You for this truth, Lord. We can look at where we're at in life and we can complain and we can point fingers, and rightly so, that there are <coughs> evil people in positions of authority that harm other people for their own power. And we can complain about it all we want, but it comes down to us, each one of us individually, making sure that we're right with you. Help us then, Lord, to be a beacon for others to see and hopefully follow. That they too might recognize that these two commands are the most important thing in life. To love you above everything else, put you first before anything else, to, to obsess over nothing, to lust after nothing, to 
be focused on anything other than you. Because you are love. And you love us. You sent your son Christ Jesus to die on the cross so that we might be forgiven of our wrongs. That we might be set free from our past. So I pray, Lord, this morning that each person here knows this is true. <coughs> Help us, Lord. Give us the courage it'll take to first surrender ourselves to you, but then to continue to, because uh, we're going to have to surrender ourselves daily <coughs> because of the temptation to do those things that we know are wrong. But help us, Lord, to accept Christ into our hearts as our personal Savior. To repent of our sin, never wanting to go back to that old self. We come to you now. We're focusing completely on you and we're putting you first and foremost in our lives. And because of that, now we will know what love is. And I pray, Father, that we continue each day to seek you so that we might have that change in nature so that we might be able to live by natural law, your law. Again, Father, I thank you for being here with us, and I pray, Father, that as we think of those things that we might need to change just now, right now, help us, Father, to surrender them to you. We hold a lot of anger, we hold a lot of resentment, we hold a lot of pain. We've all been hurt, and we've hurt others. We need you. Help us, Father, to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.